Our first question goes to Gabriel Gonzalez with Kate Cypress. Hello, Maria. How are you? Hello, good. And you? I'm doing do very good. Thank you for asking. Um, you had quite the impressive UFC debut, but we didn't get to talk to you after the fight. Can you go back for us and talk about what it was like to get that big victory and then go home to celebrate it? Oh, it was so nice. I fixed all my problems, what I like, what I have. And now I have normal life that I never have. It's nice. Everything's going better and better. Now everything good after my win, everything nice and sweet. You've now been through the process of the, you know, being quarantined in the hotel, the getting tested, there's no fans. Are you doing anything different this time now that you have the experience of doing it once? Oh yeah, it was different because last time when we come in here, we was available to go Vegas everywhere, but now they shot us in hotel and after fight we know not available go out too. Like now it's more hard, more different, but it's okay. Now at least a couple of days we can have a fun and that's it. Shut. <laughs> Are you someone that likes to get out and just um just relax outside during fight week so you're not too focused on it? Oh, like I just fight for my pleasure, you know, I'm not like sitting in hotel and oh, scared. No, I like do whatever I, I just get pleasure from life. I'm in Vegas here, a lot of interesting things. I go watch it after I will cut weight, go and fight, like just get pleasure, enjoy, not really get scared about it. Like it's how I change after Dana White contenders because on Dana White contenders, I was scared. I was like this. But not now. Now I only get pleasure for what I'm doing. I understand. Uh, you're fighting Shauna Dobson. She's hitting, you know, she's in a rough part of her career with the three losses. Do you feel, I guess, how do you prepare for somebody who you know has so much motivation because you know she does not want to lose one more? Yeah, sure. She not will lose one more. She will be fight. Like, it was so bad because if she lost, yeah. Uh, I hope she lost contract, or I not hope, I guess she lost contract if she if she lost, like Dana White tell no, and she understand it, and I'm sure she will be fight tough, and I guess it will be not, not easy, but we will see. <laughs> My final question, there's not too many UFC fighters from Kazakhstan, what does it mean to you to represent your country on a big stage like the UFC? Oh, it's so nice. I'm very glad that finally somebody from Kazakhstan and UFC and Kazakhstanian guys, they can cheer for somebody from their country. And especially women, no one woman in UFC from Kazakhstan. And now it's me. <laughs> yeah. And okay. people can cheer in for me. Like, hello, Kazakhstan. Hello, my country. <laughs> Did you find that there were a lot of fans, you know, responding well when you went back home? Yeah, they will be very glad to see me, I guess. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you too. Our next question is from Gabriel Pengelangen with Dojo Drifter. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, good, and you? I'm doing good. So this, is, this isn't your first time fighting at the Apex with no crowd. How does it feel to be back so soon? It will be with Sotum. Oh, sorry, I don't understand the question, sorry. No, how does it feel oh, to be back? Oh, so, so quickly, yeah, it's okay. I, I used to do it like when I only come into America, I do Dana White contenders after Invicta fights, like after one month, like if, if I'm available to fight, I will do it. Just after my Invicta fights, like car hit me, I was kicked in my eyes, like a lot of shit happens, it's because I can't fight so long. But usually I fight pretty much because I like it. Because I, I even not get tired because I like what I'm doing. It's even not hard work for me. It's pleasure. I get pleasure for everything that I do. Yeah, and I saw in, on your social media that you're training Krav Maga. How long have you been training that? And do you apply any of those techniques in your MMA fights? Yeah, I think some Krav Maga 100% helped me. Because a lot of things that people are using in Krav Maga, but it's never teach it to MMA gym. I don't know why this thing's legal. And yes, I will use it. 
And I noticed that you have a very interesting tattoo on your chest. Is that a wolf with wings and mm. boxing gloves? Yeah, it's so what's a, wolf what was with wings. Behind it's that? both boxing gloves, but now it's swords. It's swords coming up from wolf. And what's uh, the idea behind that tattoo? Why did you get that one? I didn't realize. <laughs> I have very big imagination. <laughs> I and is that your favorite it. tattoo? What? Is it your favorite among your tattoos? Uh, how long this one I get after my fight? Like this sword, I, I just change it. Like fix tattoo, something nice. Okay. And you know, the welterweight division has a BMF belt held by Jorge Masvidal. Who do you think is a BMF of your division right now? Uh, in my division, who's the best? Yeah, the, the BMF, you know, the, the baddest fighter out there in your I division. I guess Valentina Shevchenko, she be BMF in my weight, 100%. And would you like to be known as a BMF of the women's flyweight division someday? Would you want to be the BMF? Uh, yeah, okay. it, it takes time, but one time I come into belt, and I don't know who will get it belt, but I take it one time. It takes time, but I will. Okay, best of luck, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from Ezekiel Berganzi with Super Luches. Hey, how are you? Hey, good. And you? Fine, thank you. So this is your second fight in closed doors. Are you anxious to fight in UFC in front of fans or are you used to fighting closed locations with um, no public? Oh. I, I really don't care just when uh, it's it's just different because when you fight with no public you hear everything hear your coaches every punches it sounds like this but when public uh, people screaming and you go into cage and they scream and you just feel it oh, it's just different but with people yeah it's but it's kind of motivate you but you feel pressure like but I I, I guess it can affect you sometimes people. It and do you prefer to fight with people or without people in in the in the sport aspect what do you prefer of course i want to fight without people but it's not will be like this always like one time people come in and i'm supposed to fight with a lot of people it's a, it's okay i will get it like so but you, uh, when people yeah. watching this screaming and you just walk in and feel this you frustrated <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this is your second fight uh, in UFC, and between them there is a few months. Uh, do you change some aspects of your fighting game, or uh, are you leaving the things uh, how they are like for this fight? Do you change so much or not? Not so. Much. Of course, I change. I change every my fight. I grow up every time, and I get some things. Uh, my my coaches teach me. And now I'm better than I was. Like every fight, I'm better than I was. And and after your first win in uh, UFC, uh, UFC kind of put uh, its uh, its spotlight on you. Like uh, they like they love your victory in social media. A lot of people talking about that. Uh, how did you felt? Like as you say, you are the first woman from Kazakhstan being in the UFC, and now UFC puts its spotlight on you. So how do you feel at that moment? How I feel? Yeah. Of course, uh, first time I even can't believe in this, like, wow, it's me, oh my gosh. But now it's okay, I, I use it to it, and I keep going. I want to be best of the best. <laughs> do you have a dream fight in your division? Like, after this fight, who do you want to face? Oh, I guess I would like to take revenge with Tracy Cortez. It will be nice. Because it's only one girl who I'm losing. Like, I, I guess people want to see it. A lot of people send me messages like, Oh, let's go revenge. I want to revenge. Revenge. And I guess it will be interesting. Thank you very much and good luck on Saturday. Yeah, thank you. That's all we have for you today, Maria. Thank you.